Though he's remained unnamed as far as Disney is concerned, Hans's father, the King of the Southern Isles, was a terrible person and treated his youngest son far worse than an evil stepmother would a stepchild. It's no secret that Hans had a tough upbringing, as he explained to Anna in the first Frozen film. But after reading the novel A Frozen Heart by Elizabeth Rudnick, it's clear that his father didn't do anything to make his life any easier. In fact, it was the opposite, and it turns out that the King of the Southern Isles has a terrible secret involving the treatment of his last-born son. Being the youngest child is never easy, and Hans had it particularly rough since he was the youngest of 13, with 12 older brothers who spent their free time making sure that he was miserable. Hans was introduced as the main antagonist of Frozen, and even though the movie didn't touch on it too much, his behavior was all a result of Hans's upbringing. Frozen didn't delve into the history of Hans' family or the kingdom in the Southern Isles that they ruled, but it did show fans that the Isles' youngest prince did not have the kindest family. Hans was shown to have sociopathic tendencies as he planned to let Anna die and take over the kingdom in her stead. And the only inkling as to why he turned out to be such a brat was because of the way his family treated him as he grew up. And though the movie never mentioned Hans's father, the King of the Southern Isles, it would be hard to imagine a scenario where he didn't know about the torture and pranks that Hans faced at the hands of his brothers. Frozen didn't expand on Hans's brothers, aside from the few comments that he made to Anna about how they treated him. Hans described to her a two-year period in his life that his brother spent making him think that he didn't exist by outright ignoring him. And what's even more messed up was in Frozen, though Hans was visibly upset with what his brothers had done, judging by the look on his face, he decided to brush it off by saying, it's just what brothers do. This only further suggests that Hans had it rough growing up, and clearly his father wasn't of any help, because he didn't mention his father trying to stop his brothers or reprimand them at all. Now, thanks to A Frozen Heart by Elizabeth Rudnick, the way that Hans's family specifically Specifically, his brothers and father treated him has become a lot clearer. The book follows the story of Hans and Anna, alternating between each of their perspectives as the events of Frozen unfolded. And what makes A Frozen Heart such a good source is that, according to Disney, everything in it is canon. This means that the description given by Hans's inner monologue, whenever he thought back on his depressing upbringing, is what actually happened to the character before the events of Frozen. Even though the novel didn't give all of Hans's brothers names, it did finally reveal that his eldest brother was named Caleb, and he was their father's favorite. Hans's third oldest brother was named Lars, and unlike the rest of his siblings, Lars was the only one who didn't enjoy messing with their younger brother. And the last set of siblings that the book actually named were the twins, Runo and Rudy. They also happened to be the pair that tortured Hans the most. Along with the tricks that they played on Hans, they also made sure to undermine him at every opportunity. Hans even recalled in the book a moment when his brothers chose to humiliate him at political meetings in the kingdom. A Frozen Heart also informed fans that every single one of Hans's 12 older brothers was already married aside from Hans and his two brothers Rudy and Runo, who at least had each other. Meaning that not only was Hans's upbringing tragic and depressing, but it was also lonely. He didn't even have a father that cared about him. And instead, he ended up with one that, according to the book, encouraged Hans's elder brother's bad behavior. Hans's father may not have had a name, but he certainly had an impact on his son and the sociopath that he became in the first Frozen movie. In A Frozen Heart, the unnamed king of the Southern Isles is remembered by Hans as being rather cruel to him and very supportive of Hans's elder brothers and the torturous ways that they treated their little brother. He was presented as being very neglectful of Lars, which was mainly due to his belief that the strong should always assert their strength over the weak, which was exactly what Hans's brothers were doing whenever they picked, teased, or physically harmed the young prince. It goes without saying that Hans's life might not have been so tragic had his father actually cared about him. In Rudnick's book, Hans thought back to a specific quote that his father told him that obviously stuck with him up until the current point in his life. After being tormented by his brothers, instead of being comforted by the king, Hans's father simply told him that the Westergaards needed to be lions, not mice. This implied that he saw how Hans was affected by his brother's constant bombardment of pranks. But instead of being concerned about Hans like a good father, he was more concerned about his youngest son appearing weak. So the king didn't intervene in any of the pranks or abuse that Hans was put through, and instead he supported them. Behind closed doors, the king was described as often showing favoritism to his elder sons, especially the ones who asserted themselves. This group never included Hans, though. Instead, a frozen heart described Hans's father looking down at him with disgust and distress, which only adds to the tragedy that was Hans's upbringing. He was a child who clearly needed someone to be looking out for him, and according to Elizabeth's novel, the only support system that he ever had came from his mother, who was also unnamed. Instead, she was only ever referred to as the queen or mother. Hans's mother was depicted as loving her son much more than anyone else in the 
the family did. And Hans could even remember keeping her in his thoughts and using that as his only motivation to not act out or show discomfort during their family gatherings, when in reality all he wanted to do was get away. If anything, the book showed that Hans disliked his family as much as his family seemed to dislike him, which was, without a doubt, caused by the way that he was treated by everyone aside from his mother. Odds are, the only time that Hans's father ever showed him any respect would have been during public events. Any time that he was in the eye of the public, the king would have been forced to show his son respect. Otherwise, he or his family might have lost the respect of their subjects. So he would have had to keep his disdain for Hans a secret, though behind closed doors he let it be known that he didn't like that there was a weakling in the family. And since Hans was forced to spend almost every day within the castle, he was practically subjected to torture from his brothers and mistreatment from his father on a regular basis. Eventually, this mentally and physically abusive lifestyle led Hans to seek out a way to earn his respect for himself elsewhere. Now, aside from Hans's mother, the young prince did have one other family member who at the very least sympathized with him and actually led Hans into devising his plan to become the king of Arendelle. Lars may have been the third eldest child, but according to the novel, he was the family's youngest for a while. That would have given Lars a little bit of insight into how Hans must have been feeling, considering he was in that position for a supposedly long time. And in a moment when he was sympathizing with his younger brother, Lars brought up a way that Hans could escape the kingdom and still demand respect as a king. And Hans practically jumped at the opportunity, in no small part because it would take him away from his tragic home life. According to A Frozen Heart, Lars was the one who informed Hans of King Agnar and Queen Iduna's death and let him know that the throne in Arendelle was technically empty. And from that point, it didn't take much else to convince the youngest Westergaard to head to Arendelle and try to cozy up with the princess with the hopes of hearing wedding bells. Hans believed that if he could become the next king of Arendelle by marrying Princess Elsa, then he wouldn't have had to deal with his family's constant torture or his father's constant disapproval. He would have finally earned the respect of being a king, something that the book showed he always longed for. This was when the first Frozen film picked up, and Hans was determined to show his father that he was, in fact, a lion and not a mouse like everyone saw him as. But the iconic Disney film showed Hans failed in his plan to become the king of Arendelle. Not only did he target the wrong princess when he approached Anna instead of Elsa, but he also underestimated the bond between the two and ended up being sent back to the Southern Isles in a cell. And it is without a shadow of a doubt that he was heading right back to his depressing and abuse-filled life. Fans were actually given a brief glimpse of Hans's punishment in the animated short, Frozen Fever. Though Hans only made a brief appearance towards the end of the short, it showed the young prince shoveling manure in the royal stables right before he got pegged with a giant snowball that sent him flying into a pile of manure. Though it's unclear what Hans was up to during the events of Frozen 2, there is still a chance that he might reappear if the studio ever chooses to produce a third Frozen movie. Until then, it's hard to imagine his life as anything other than miserable. Even though Hans turned out evil, did hearing Hans's origin make you feel any sympathy for the prince? Make sure you let us know in the comments down below.